Hi, I'm Fabrice Harari. In this course, um, we're going to talk about object-oriented programming. This course is based on parts of uh, two previous courses on the same subject, one realized in 2007 and the other in 2009. This version has been, of course, revised and completed for WX DEF CON 2013 in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Um, in this course, we're going to talk about um, what is object-oriented programming, how to use it, when to use it, and while we will go over the theory, we'll also be very practical in how, step-by-step, uh, step, you can integrate object-oriented programming in your coding, and little by little use its advantages for your gains without a headache. So, uh, don't be afraid if you've never done object-oriented programming before, you are exactly at the right place. So, what is object-oriented programming? Well, basically, it's classes and objects and pointers and a lot of other words that be really mean that you're just going to code in a slightly different way. So you're going to organize your code in a way that is going to make it more efficient. That's the purpose of object-oriented programming, nothing more than that. How does it work? Well, first we're going to compare uh, the concept of uh, object-oriented programming with what you already know. A class is basically a uh, like a collection of procedure. Um, you all know a collection of procedure. When you start a WinDev project, by example, you have the uh, um, automatically created a global um, collection of procedure. Uh, so you can create another one, and in there you can put uh, as many procedures as you, as you want and you can organize them by putting them in several uh, collection of procedure, one for each purpose. So at this point, a class is basically the same thing. But in a class you also have a set of variables. They are not called variables in a class, they are called members, but that's just uh, to say that uh, they are inside an object, otherwise they are really kind of regular variables. Except, of course, that in a collection of procedure, you can also have variables. Uh, in fact, when you create a collection of procedure, you have an area of code, which is the uh, global declaration for the procedure, and there you can also uh, have variables. So at that point, a class is still like a collection of procedure. You can have variable. So why not just use a collection of procedure? Well, the reason is that uh, with a class, with objects, you can do more than with a collection of procedure, and that's what we're going to talk about now. The first thing that you have to consider is that when you use variable in a collection of procedure, this variable are global, and you have only one value in a variable at any given time. That's where the concept of objects uh, comes around. When you have uh, a class, you are going to declare as many objects of that class as you want. That means that uh, you will be able to have several variables of the same name, each one in a different object and with different value. And we're going to uh, talk about that a little more later. Then you have the black box concept. Now, uh, when you create a class, you have the possibility to say that some of the uh, variables that are in the class are accessible only by the code that is inside the class. Uh, it's about like saying that, okay, you're in a window, and the window that is in there can be used only inside that window. Well, you know that that's not true. If you're in, a, in another window, you can uh, access the variable of the first one by doing 
my first window dot my variable and you have access um, to the value you have access to the value you can read it but you can also write in it and that means that an outside code can modify your variable without you knowing about it well in a class you can have variable in each object but you can say that this data is protected is private and that nobody but your the code of the class itself can modify it furthermore you can also say that the methods and the methods is just the object name for a procedure so you can all also say that the methods are protected which means that you can have some of your um, procedure inside your class that can be used only by the code inside the class so basically what you can do is a black box in which you can do whatever you want and then you expose to the outside world and the outside world in that case is the remaining of your project you expose only one or two or three entry points in which you can do only some very specific things and that is extremely powerful because it means that your colleague out there doesn't have to know anything about what's going on inside the class the only thing that you have to tell him okay okay I made a class to do this you call it by this procedure that procedure that procedure and you're done and everything that's inside it doesn't matter it's completely encapsulated now something else that you can do with classes that you cannot do uh, with a collection of procedure is called inheritance in fact you have two different uh, set of terms to s say the same thing you can say that a class derives from another class or that a class inherits from another class I think that both terms are quite uh, simple to understand but an, an example will help let's say that you have a class uh, containing all your code for printing so we're going to call it CL print and then you decide to uh, create another class that is going to print invoices well clearly the class that is printing the invoices needs to print so you could just add the method inside the first class but you also going to need another class to uh, print something else like um, your catalog and the printing of the catalog is going to be very different than the printing of the invoice not working the same way at all so there's no reason to put these two together so now you're going to have several class one doing the basic printing one doing the printing on the invoice and one doing the printing of the catalog and the printing of the invoice is going to inherit from the basic printing the printing of the catalog is going to inherit from the basic printing too so imagine that you have now all your uh, collection of procedures except that they are organized in a tree like structure and one will inherit from this one or from that one or from several of them in order to have the capacities that the original class had already so we can do more with a, a class than with a collection of procedure and to do more we are going to create objects objects of a class now what is an object really when you think about it an object is nothing more than a variable it is exactly described the same way except for one thing when you work with a regular variable being a string an integer a real or whatever you have a limited set of type of the variable that you can use and this set is defined by the language you're using now when you create an object you create an object of a class that you have defined or that somebody else has defined 
which means that you basically are creating a new type of variable. So when you're working with a class, you're going to declare a variable little different than the other just because it's an object and it's of this class. And this object will be able to have a lot of uh, properties that are depending of the class. So, instead of doing s my string is string, which is the classical declaration for a string, you're going to do o oh, my object is my class. And you have defined a new variable. It's a variable of type object and more precisely it's a variable of type my class and the my class is going to be whatever you need it to be. So the first main difference between a regular variable and an object is the fact that there are different types of object and we're going to talk first about the difference between a static and dynamic object. So what is a static object? Well, a static object is the thing that uh, resembles the plus uh, a regular variable. Um, it's really uh, declared the same way, the syntax is the same, all my object is sell my class, nothing else, nothing more. Um, it's declared somewhere in the project, just like a window, so in the initialization of the project, of a window, of uh, anything, really, you declare a variable the same way. And it's usable only there, the same way that a local uh, variable is usable only there. So when you're talking about a static object, you have a static object that can be local to a window, global to the project, global to the window, local to a specific uh, code. So it, its behavior and its lifespan is really uh, behaving the same than a regular variable. So static object, think variable, nothing more. And again, that's where the object is, is um, an improvement over regular stuff that you're using. It's because, yes, the static object is working like a regular variable, but a dynamic object is a whole other matter, and you can do much more thing with it. So what is a dynamic object? Well, basically, it's a variable, but the lifespan of the variable depends of directly you and your code. The reason for that is that you're creating it at some point in your code with a, a syntax that is nearly the same but add the, the keyword dynamic. So, do my object is CL my class dynamic, and you are killing it, really literally killing it, when you do this delete do my object. So, when you're declaring a dynamic object, you are also saying in your code when this object ceases to exist. The, it goes to the point where uh, not only uh, you have to create it and delete it, but, but the problem is that if you do not delete it, it stays in memory. Let's talk about an object that you declare at the beginning of the code in a, a window. Okay, you say that it's because it's declared there, when you close the window, it's going to disappear. Well, no, it's not. What's going to disappear is the local name of the object, the one that you declare, the do my object that you declared in the beginning of the window, is not going to be accessible anymore. Okay, because, well, it's declared there, so it's not known anywhere else. It's The name is the same than a regular variable. But the object itself that has been created with the different variable in it and all that will continue to exist because you didn't do a delete do my object. And that is directly a memory leak. So when you're working on dynamic object, you have to manage the deletion 
and you have to really take care of it precisely otherwise your program is going to uh, use more and more and more memory and you won't know why but of course uh, the good thing is that you can create many many objects you can manage them you can delete them you can do lots of wonderful things that we're going to talk about so there is a reason why you will want to use dynamic object of course because of all that there is no such thing as a local dynamic object even if you declare a dynamic object the my object is cell my class dynamic in the section of the code where you put the local keyword before well it won't change a thing uh, the name will be local the my object but the object itself will not it is dynamic therefore you have to delete it so clearly we are starting to see uh, differences between variable and object and let's talk about some of those differences when you copy a variable into another let's say that you have uh, an integer uh, and you create a second integer and you do my first integer equal my second integer you end up with the same value in the two variable the content of the uh, variable is copied it means that you have the same value in it but if then you do my second variable equal 5 one of them is going to be 6 the other is going to be 5 it's really the content that is copied and that's it that's really a regular variable when you do that with objects you are not copying the content you are copying the address of the object you are copying the name of the object and that's where you have to make the first really leap of understanding suddenly uh, you are working with things that have possible complex content in, uh, in a class you can declare hundreds of variable if you want so you have a huge structure of things and when you're doing my object one equal my object two you are not copying the content you are just saying that my object one the name my object one and my object two the name my object two are pointing to the same address in memory so you now have two names two keys two telephone number for the same place that's what you're doing with object of course there is now a sp specific syntax that allow you to copy also the content of an object and not the address anymore so it's possible to copy the content but sometimes you're not going to copy the whole content because it depends of what content you have in an object and the complexity of it and in some cases it's just not possible to copy you're just going to have the same address so by default I would like you to uh, think of things this way if you copy an object into another you are not copying anything you are just giving the same address to point to to two different names and that means that uh, you have to deal with object in a different way all this is going of course to become clearer when we'll see the examples a little further on so let's review what do we know about classes about object oriented programming we know that a class is kind of like a collection of procedure you when you create a class you have the same way possibility to define inside several procedure in that case they're called methods but that's just another name for really the same thing um, we also know that to use a class you need to declare an object and we know that an object is really kind of like a regular variable except when you go further in your use of object and you can have your variable behave in a new way but that's about it it's about a regular variable 
It's only when you want to go further with the use of object that you encounter the concept of pointers and it's true that pointers are scary, we know that. But remember, you don't have to use that notion if you don't want to. So you can start with object very simply and come to it little by little. That's what I did. We also know now that writing a class is kind of creating a new type of variable. Suddenly you are not working on a string anymore, you are not working on a numeric anymore, you are not working on an array. You define what type of complex information you can store in an object, the same way that you can define a structure, and uh, you can basically do whatever you want and store as simple a thing as one integer in a class, as complex as several hundred variables with uh, arrays and things like that, everything inside one object. So really you can do whatever you want. You also define what operations are going to be available on this kind of object. All the method that you're creating, all the procedure that you're creating, apply on an object, which means that you are saying, okay, I'm not working on integer anymore, and it's not only plus, minus, and multiply that I have available. I'm working on this and that and this other, and the operations that are going to be available are going to be whatever I need. Remember also that only the one you define are available. Uh, only the operation that you decide are possible will ever be operated on your object. Nothing else can access it. If, of course, you call it the right way, it can become a full black box, something that's extremely powerful that the other programmer of your company will not full will, they just use the entry point and uh, everything will work inside it in a way that they don't have to know. So basically, with this notion of object, you now have the possibility to define your own language. You can create your own functions, they will be applied on object of a certain type, and uh, you are going to create things. In fact, if you go far enough, you could replace everything that is done in regular W language by your own classes with your own functions and use the regular W language uh, syntax only inside your class. So it's that powerful and it's really the opening of a, a, a world where you can do many, many, many new things. So for those of you who have already uh, seen some of my courses, you already have a few uh, examples in mind. For those of you who don't, don't be afraid, there is something coming with this course. It's a whole uh, WinDev project. It's called uh, Object Oriented Programming Dynamic, in which we're going to have example of both the very simple classes that you can create that really looks like a collection of procedure, and of the power that you can get with just a little use of dynamic objects. So, in this project, what do we have? We have a CL project class uh, in charge of managing the information about the project and doing what's needed uh, for the initialization of the project. So, very simple, I have that in each and every one of my uh, project. Then we have a CLDB class. Uh, again, this one is managing information about the database and does what's needed to init the database, connect to the database, all this kind of thing. Uh, the, the example that we have here are real-life examples. All these classes are the basis of any project that I start. So it's, it's really not uh, a basic example with circles, square, and all this kind of wonderful thing that you see in, in school most of the time. All these are really real-life uh, classes. You also have a CL param class, and uh, we won't have the time to go in details in all the things that this thing does, but believe me, I've been using it for years, and it's doing lots of very interesting things that you can use. Um, 
yeah, in details, it's managing parameters for the application. So any kind of parameter you can have for your application, you can write in, read in, get back, uh, and so on and so forth. You can build in fact, whole functionalities uh, on top of it. There is also a CL log class, and it provides method to log information. I'm using it to uh, debug a specific case and all that. And here you're going to see for the first time uh, a, a word that we're going to talk about in detail later. It's called global. And it's the example that we'll use today to see what we can do with uh, centralized information and global member and all that. Uh, for now, you don't know what it is, and that's okay. Just know that you have a real life example on uh, this aspect of object 2. There's also a CL error method that I'm using to manage error uh, appearing in the code somewhere. So it can be a hyperfile error, it can be anything else. Uh, it's a centralized system to store information about error and uh, getting it back and displaying it and all that. Um, there's also a CL email class. It's used to send email. Yes, absolutely. Nothing more than that. But it's in a class because it's going to be used by the other. CL error in particular is going to inherit from CL email in order to have the capability to send uh, the content of an error uh, information package to uh, the support, by example. There's also CL GUID, which basically provides a method to generate a GUID. So clearly, a lot of those things could be just one or two uh, methods and could be uh, global procedures. But by doing them inside classes, you can inherit from them, you can use them everywhere where you have your classes, and it is, you will see, as easy to use as regular uh, procedural programming.